Hey everyone, this is Daniel and in today's video we're going to talk about Microsoft Forms Ownership Transfer. Basically, how to transfer the ownership of a form which is created by the user who is no longer with the company. And in the process, I'll also show you a few errors you can avoid. So stick around, but first, here's my intro video. So let's get started. Now one of the first things I want to talk about is the actual location of where this data is stored. And it's interesting to note that across Microsoft Forms, it's actually only located in two places. Uh, most of the data is stored in the United States, all the servers in the United States. But with the exception of the European-based tenant, they are stored specifically in servers in the Europe. I thought that'd be an interesting information for you to note. All right, so now we'll go ahead and focus on how to go ahead and um, change the ownership of a form for those people who've already been deleted. Now, the Microsoft documentation talks about using Microsoft Graph to go ahead and validate, and I'm gonna show you a very simple way. Granted, this is correct by no means, that I'm not questioning that, but I'll just show you a simple way, which is basically just go to Active Directory and we will be view it over there, all right? So let's now go through that process and come up with some scenarios. All right, so here's the first scenario, all right? We get a ticket, email, phone call, whatever, that a user named Nestor, and we get its user information, uh, has left the company, they have an existing Microsoft form, and I need to go ahead and get ownership of the form. Well, how do we actually verify what that form ownership was by Nestor? And for that, we go ahead and leverage this URL that has been provided in the Microsoft doc. And it basically says that go ahead and put this URL, and then add, after the original owner, you put in the email address. So I actually happen to have a email address of that user, which they said Nestor has left the company. So I'm gonna go ahead and simply just do a copy and I'll paste it directly into the account in the tenant. And that's just me over here. This is me, I'm the admin. So I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna go ahead and paste the URL. And the URL is the exact same thing we saw in the Microsoft doc, except now it has Nestor's email address. Now, if I just go ahead and hit enter, let's see what happens. So when I click on enter, it actually comes back with this error. Now this is not what we were expecting for, but this is a really good message. He says, hey, we can't access this page the form owner still has an active account. And that is a very important information for you to know is because first of all, as an admin, I should have gone and verified, hey, is that user, is Nestor really left you know, from the company? But if for whatever reason, I forgot to do that, I skipped that step, I can come over here and even this thing validates, say, hey man, Nestor is still with the company, so don't go ahead and take his information. So I really like this feature and functionality which is, which is uh, built into Microsoft Forms, and I like that, all right? So what we can do though, is we can always go ahead and validate, hey, is Nestor available? And if he is, then great, you know, we won't worry about that. But now let's go through that other scenarios. What if a user has actually left the company? So in that case, I'm not gonna go ahead and look at a lady, um, Adele. Adele was a form builder, but Adele has now left the company. A ticket came in regarding Adele and the form. So I'm gonna come in now and I'll go ahead and now see, put the same type of, you know, copy and paste, but this time you will see it's actually Adele. And now when I click on Adele's information, it comes up this way. And you see here on the top, it says the form belongs to Adele and will be deleted on this certain date unless you move to the account of your choice. Uh, unless you move to your account. It's very specifically, it's actually giving you as the user directly access to this. So I, you know, say for example, there's a question comes that Daniel, you're the admin, it's potential that you actually have access. Can you just prove to me that anybody else can do it? Well, let's just go take an example of that Nestor, right? The Nestor is still with the company. So let's go check out Nestor's account. So here we are, I've logged in as Nestor. And now let's go and try that URL, the same one about going and validating if the user is actually deleted, which is Adele. So I'm clicking on this, and now Nestor as an everyday user also gets this access. So important takeaway from here is that you don't have to be a global admin, you don't have to be any other admin level to validate this. You just need to get that URL and specifically the URL you should have that user who has been deleted or is marked deleted in Azure AD. So in this case, Adele is marked deleted. Now when I come and say, oh yeah, she had a great form for service and support. And now when I click on the ellipses over here, it's giving me the option to move it. So when I click on move on the right side, a few other options come up. It's only giving me an option to move it to my forms. Like I'm Nestor, I'm the person to put in the URL in my account. It says, do you want to move it to any one of these or do you want it to move to one of these groups? And in just in a few minutes down the road, I will explain to you why it is a much better option to use groups, but just out of you know 
for the sake of this section, I'll say yes, go ahead and move it to mine. I'm going to go and say move. I did that. It is going and actually making a transition. So it deleted it from Adele's original deleted form section. Big lesson learned over here is that only one person can do it once. You can't go ahead and do that again. And just to prove a point, if I even go and refresh this, just to make sure that, hey, what did, you know, if it deleted over there, but it came back or cookies, whatnot. So no, it is only a one time thing. And then after that, it is gone. So something very important for you to note that. But okay, I came in over here now and I've logged in as Nestor. I'm gonna go and do a refresh. Nestor in this case supposedly already had a service form, but you know, you can see that, hey, this is the original one which came in. This was the form. This was the one that originally was in a group, all right? So kind of important to note that now Nestor did get access to that form, which originally Adele had created. Adele has now left the company. Her account was marked deleted in Azure AD and now Nestor has access to it. So that's, that's a very important first thing to know is that how you go ahead and get the form and now we'll just talk about some new workarounds techniques which you have over there. So now what I want you to do is actually leverage Microsoft 365 groups in that way, when you are building a form, you are already sharing the process of building the form with another set of user or users who are part of the group. Therefore, if you or any other form creator has left the company, you will not run into that entire problem of going ahead and fetching that old form back from somebody who has left the company. You won't have to do that because already is inside groups. So basically groupify the Microsoft Forms process. And here's a very simple example. Like I'll go ahead and prior to me even creating the form, I'll just create the form, make it look nice and fancy. Then I can go ahead and share it with the groups. So let's take that example over here. I have, I am now Joanna. Joanna is coming in and Joanna is gonna go ahead and build a form. And we'll just, you know, quickly say that this is a, a, a nice test form. All right, done everything. And I'll just add another choice. You know, how are you feeling? Uh, you feeling and I'll just put in some nice, you know, and uh, not bad. Oh, and my favorite, meh. All right, so we took care of that. Now the form is all good. If I go outside and now move it to the forms, this is the form that we created. Now keep in mind though, this section is not the good place to go and do all the moving. You want to go to all my forms. Now I can go into all my forms. Now, Joanna is pretty happy saying, this is great. I'm going to go ahead and now take care of this section over here, which is all my forms. But now I'm ready to go and save it and share it with the group. So I'm going to come over here now, click on that ellipsis and I'm going to go to move. And I know that people in the operations are the people that I want to share it with. All right, so I'm going to click on operations and I'm going to click on move and it'll go ahead and move. And you see, it moved it for my forms over there. Now in, in the incident pin place, you already still see it. But if I go to now the operations place, if I click on operations, it shows up over here. So do you kind of notice some of the resemblance how we have, especially with the power automate flows, when you create a flow, it's always in the open pin, open area, but when you remove it and share it, it automatically moves it to the shared place, kind of like similarities, which I thought you would notice. So I've come over here now to all forms place. Now just as a test, Let's go see somebody else who happens to have access to that same form. And that is Nestor. Nestor is part of the operations place. So over here, if I come in now and if I just go ahead and refresh it, it tells me now that operations has total number of one forms. So when I go in, this is now a place where Nestor and Joanna both see the same form. And now even Nestor has access to the same form. Remember the one that Joanna first created, she went ahead and kind of polished it up then share it with the group. Both Nestor and Joanna are part of the operations. So in the future, if Joanna were to now leave the company, we don't need to put any of that ticket to the Microsoft to go get that access. Nestor already has access to the form, so we are good, we haven't lost any information. So wasn't that awesome? I just walked you through some very important steps and as an overview, I now showed you how to go ahead and first verify that a user is actually deleted and you can do that from Azure AD side. Secondly is when you use the link, it will tell you that, hey, this person is deleted. So it verifies. If the person's not deleted, it'll tell you, hey, this person's still active. But if it's deleted, then you have only one shot, only one opportunity to go ahead and get that form and assign it to somebody else. Later on, that place is always gonna be empty. And then finally, use Office 365 groups, groupify it. In that case, if people or the makers of the forms come and go, the form itself will always be available. So hopefully this was helpful. And as always, keep using Microsoft Forms. Thank you so much for watching my YouTube video. Remember, this is all free with fresh content that is updated on a weekly basis. So if you've already subscribed to my channel, thank you and spread the word. If you haven't already, subscribe 
click on the bell notification and let the learning begin.